Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. This is fifth part of AWS Event Driven Pipeline series. In this series, we are trying to create a event driven based data pipeline. We have already covered four part of this series. If you want to check what we have done so far, you can go to my channel, click on playlist. And here is the playlist with the name as AWS Event Driven Pipeline. You can click it and all the four videos will be in front of you. You can go ahead and give it a watch. All right, let's do one thing and do a quick recap of what we have achieved so far. Let me go to one note where we have our architecture diagram. So far, we have completed this pipeline till this glue job. We have created S3 bucket for source and target, SNS topic, SQS. We have created our Lambda. We have successfully tested it. If it is able to trigger our glue job or not. We have also tested our glue job. If it is able to transform our file as well, if it is able to save our file in parquet format into target path or not. Now till this point, we have done everything, right? Now what we need to do is our data is available in the target path. We need to make it available in the Athena. For that, we are going to create one database first. Let me go to the notepad sheet where we are tracking our work. If you will read the 11 point, this we have already tested in the last video. Let's go ahead and start from point number 12. Create a database with this name. So let me go back to the AWS console. Here I need to click on blue. We'll go to blue. Here we will go to data catalog. Then we will click on databases. We will add a database. Give it a name. In our case, it will be EDP underscore DB. Rest these two things are optional. Click on create database button. And our database got created. Now, if you want, you can go to Athena and check if your database is visible there or not. I'm currently in a Mumbai region. In Athena also, I'm in a Mumbai region. You need to click on this arrow. After that, data catalog will be visible to you. Here you can select your database. Our database is visible. But as we have not created any table on top of it, that's why this section is empty. Okay. Now go back. The second part of this step 12 is we need to create a crawler with this name. Okay. Now go ahead. Go back to the glue section. And here you need to click on crawlers. This is a crawler dashboard. Now you need to click on create crawler. You need to provide a name. I'm giving it EDP underscore crawler. You need to provide description if you want, but it is optional. Let me click on next. And here it will ask us the data source. In our case, the data source is target bucket location. Let's try to see it. Our target bucket was EDP target inside that target folder and then orders folder. This is the location where we would like to run our crawler. So let's go back to the crawler setting. Here we need to add the data source. Let me click on it. Our data source is S3. This is fine. Go down. Here you need to click on browse S3. You need to browse your target bucket and the location on top of which you are trying to create a crawler. So we are trying to create a crawler on top of this location. So what will happen? Crawler will run. It will crawl all these files and accordingly it will update the glue catalog and it will create a table for us in a database which we are going to define in this crawler setting. Let me click on choose, click outside, and now this is OK. This setting you can remain as is, crawl all subfolders, and click on add an S3 data source. Click next. It will ask you if you want to create, if you want to use any existing IAM role or you want to create any new role. So what I'll do is I will use the existing glue role which we have created for our one of a job, OK, EDP role. Because this role already have a permission related to glue. So I'm not creating a new IAM rule. Now next, here you need to select the database. We have already created a database with this name. Next, do you want to give any prefix to your table name? No. If you do not give any prefix, then your table name will be orders only. I have already told you that on which folder crawler is going to run. Crawler will create a table with that name only. So in the glue, you will see that crawler has created a table with the name as orders. Okay. Now let's go ahead and click on next. Now everything is fine. Let's go ahead and create a crawler. All right. If I want, I can run it right now. But what I want is I want it to run on the basis of any event. If we will go back to the diagram. So as soon as there is a new file in target, I want this crawler to get auto triggered. But how it will get triggered? It will get triggered with the help of Lambda. And again, how this Lambda will run? This Lambda will run when we will create one S3 notification on top of this target bucket. 
please notice i have not created any sqs or sns in between sns does not make any sense and sqs i have not included in order to avoid any complexity okay so now let's go ahead and see what is our next step database is created crawler is created now we need to create a lambda which will trigger the crawler as soon as we have a final target s3 path this thing we have just discussed then create a s notification on top of target location target will be this lambda okay let's create the lambda first and i'll keep the lambda name as this one go back search for lambda this will be very fairly simple create function author from sketch function name will be this runtime will be python 3.11 that's everything should remain same but let's do one thing this time we do not want aws to create lambda im role for us let's select the im role ourselves i'll click on use an existing role and we will use the same role which got created as part of first lambda so that role is edp etl function role why i am using this role because this role already have permission related to blue okay let's cross check whatever i have just said in below you can see one hyperlink which is hyperlink of that im role only if i will click and open it in the next tab it will open that im role and here in permission we can see that this this role indeed have permission related to blue and that's why we are using it now click on create function okay so i have already created a code this is a lambda code to which i will just provide two argument region and crawler name region will be mumbai for mumbai we will call it as ap south one it will go to aws you can see mumbai is nothing but ap south one after that we will provide the crawler name and then we will create a glue client with the help of boto3 library after that we will use this glue client to start the crawler which we have mentioned in line number 150 so this code is fairly simple let me copy this code All right, let me deploy it. This is done. Okay, now let's go back to the notepad. Now what we have written that we need to create a S3 notification on top of target location. So here we are talking about this target path. Okay, so we will go to this target bucket and we will create a S3 notification on the target path and target for that S3 notification will be this Lambda. Okay. So this time we will not create S3 notification from S3 bucket like we used to do, right? If I'll go to buckets and then click on EDP target, then click on properties, then we will come down and we can see an option of event notification. Let's not do it from here and let's do it from the Lambda function itself. Let me go to the Lambda. Here we have a facility to add the trigger. Let me click on this button. Here we can select S3. Now here you need to select the bucket. In our case, the bucket is EDP target. Here you need to select the event type. For us, all object create events is fine. Now you need to select a prefix. In our case, prefix is, let me check. I'll go to the EDP target, target orders. In our case, the prefix is EDP target, target and orders. Okay, let me go and click over here. Sorry, EDP target is a bucket name, so that will not be part of our prefix. Our prefix is only target slash orders. All right, if you want, you can, include the suffix as well in our case we already know that every time our file will have a extension of dot parky so you can go ahead and you can add that suffix as well now you need to click on this acknowledgement you can read this and try to understand it let me click on add all right so it has already created a s3 notification for me you can click on it come back to the configuration and you can read the details now let's go ahead and check if this event notification is getting reflected into my target bucket or not Remember, we have not created it via buckets. We have directly created it via our Lambda. Let, but, but still, it should get reflected in our S3 bucket. So we will go to the bucket. We will click on property. Again, we will come down. And here we can see that it has successfully created an event notification for us. All right. So this is also done. So this part we have just completed. We have created an S3 notification on top of target location. Target will be Lambda. Yes. So target will be Lambda means whatever SRA notification you just have created that will act as a trigger for your Lambda. Okay, now what is next point? Check the whole process again if crawler is getting triggered once we have a file in target location. Okay, so now if you will notice, then you should realize that we have completed all of this middle pipeline now. What we can do is we can upload one file in S3 and then we can see if this pipeline is automatically getting triggered end to end or not. So we will do kind of a integration testing. However, this will be only for positive scenario. For negative scenario, we still have to do the development. 
let me go ahead and upload one new file and let me open the bucket list from here we will open our source bucket source files and here we will upload a new file okay let me click on upload click on add files and this time we will upload order underscore three dot csv as soon as i will upload this file we should be able to see one message in sqs and within a frame of a second this lambda will complete itself and it will even trigger the glue job also glue job will take 15 seconds so we have a time for glue job but for sqs we will not have time so let me do one thing we will cross check it in a real time so let me open it quickly and let me filter out only this queue i do not want any distraction okay so what is my expectation as soon as i am going to upload a file in this location source bucket source file we will receive one message in queue and that message will get processed by lambda i will not check lambda i will directly check if lambda has triggered our glue job or not so let me open glue job also let me click on etl jobs and our job name was edp glue let me click on runs and here we already have three instances which have already ran now the fourth instance should get triggered once the glue job is successfully completed we will have a parquet file as soon as glue job will load the file into the target location this lambda will run and this lambda will trigger this crawler okay let me open the crawler also we already have this crawler open let me keep them in the sequence this is a s3 bucket after that we will see if one message available in the queue or not after that lambda will run we will not check it we will directly check if glue job is running or not after that again one lambda will run we will not cross check it this lambda i do not need i need crawler lambda all right let me close it we need crawler lambda we will make sure we have kept it open yes this is open if you will come down you will be able to see the recent run of this crawler let me refresh it and we can see that it has not ran even once as soon as this crawler will run we will see that table is visible inside this database which is edp underscore db now we are going to do our integration testing end to end let me just go ahead and upload this file which is nothing but underscore three dot csv so as soon as i will upload it i'll check in the queue see one message is in flight that means lambda has already consumed it zero zero it is done now as soon as i will refresh it i should see one new job should be running see our glue job has already started running now let me do one thing let me quickly go to the target bucket inside target orders here there should be one file here we can see that file has already got processed let me quickly go to the crawler if i will refresh it see the crawler has also got triggered it will take around one minute or two minutes at max let's wait for it if the crawler has completed within 43 seconds now i can go to athena and if i will refresh it i should see the table i can see that the one table is visible inside this database if you want you can expand it and you can see the structure this structure is as per our expectation let me click on these three dots and we can preview the table and here we can see that the data got successfully ingested right if you want you can see how many order ids are there let me click on minimum order id and maximum order id so minimum order id should be 1 and maximum should be 300 why because we have uploaded three files starting from if i'll go to bucket oh sorry this is the source bucket here we can see that we have uploaded three bucket order one order two order three order one has a record starting from one to hundred order two has record starting from 101 to 200 and order three has record starting from 201 to 300 now let me run this query i'm expecting one and 300 yeah so one and 300 so we have successfully validated our data as well that's it for this video guys in, in the next video we are going to work on above resources where we will also talk about pager duty and slack on a very high level so this is also going to be very interesting because here you will be able to see that at real time how the incident are getting generated in pager duty with the help of cloudwatch and once we have an incident in pager duty then how in real time the messages are coming into your slack group and again if you think that this video was worth watching kindly like and subscribe my channel I'll meet you in the next video. Till then, keep learning. Take care. Bye-bye.